Hi, I'm Jess, an LNER train driver based at Newcastle. If you haven't already seen part one of our Train Sim World series, please go check it out now. But for now, let's jump back in for part two. Scenarios. All right. Uh, do you got an indication of like how long the scenario will take down the right hand corner? And then you've got a description of what the story is about. Uh, the coloured dots indicate how difficult that scenario might be. Ah, and some of the ones down the bottom will probably be for the Flying Scotsman, not the 801. Alright, let's have a go at this one. Oh. This is an entirely different beast. You're not kidding. I've drove past this a couple of times and it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah, do you know when you were talking about visibility? Yeah, go past this and you've got some visibility issues, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Alright. I'm not gonna I don't have a clue what to do here. <laughs> I, I will try my best to guide you through it. It's a little bit difficult without the tutorial having that knowledge. Yeah. Sure, so, yeah, go jump on a different one, do you reckon? That's on an AO one, right, we'll do that one. This stopped halfway down platform. This I'm normally further up. You need the signals. <laughs> if you wanted to this time, you could have a go with the safety safety systems on. Yeah, too right. Right, let's have a look. We like a challenge. Yeah, why not? All right, let me see. So, hello. What do I have to do for the DSD? Is it just another button that I'd press or? It, it's all controlled over, under the same button, so you'll just be pressing B to acknowledge. All right, cool. All right, let's put you back on. Let's put you back on. Lovely. Uh, that I slurred as well. Put you back on. Hey, TC, it's Sai. Lovely. Oh, can you use this fine, right? Uh, that should be able to. Let's have a look. Oh, it's not there. Oh, the, tra the train's reversed. What were you expecting to see there? So, yeah, I'm heading towards Peterborough, aren't I? Yeah, I am Newark on there. So, yeah, so this should be the other way around. This should be first class here. Um, So you'd have, like, the kitchen and all that. And then standard, it'd be up the other end. I mean, the trains can at times run in reverse, so we'll just we'll say that's what's happening. Yes, it is the other way around. I'm just having a look at it. The uh, first class is at the other end. Right. Okay, so that's set. That's set. So. Mask is on, reverse and off. There we go, right B. Forgot about B for a minute there. And AWS operational. That is very realistic. That's exactly what it sounds like. Right. However, normally I'd have to do the train fault acknowledgement there as well. Um, it's fine. All right, that looks like it's already set up. Um, again, pan's not up in the right direction, but it's just it's fine. If we then go and register the GSMR. Missed off my head code there, but we'll accept it. Don't need open. Oh, no, do not deregister. Cancel. Cancel. So, obviously, normally then we had code would come up there. Delta 39. Right, just since it's telling me to do that first. Oh. 
sensitive little thing, isn't it? Ugh. Yeah, we, basically when we normally mobilise a train we do a lot more than just this, but obviously it's just how the game's set up. So if I was mobilising this set, which means this just came in, there's been a key out and a key's had to go back in. Um, before I even look, it's um, obviously letting the passengers and stuff like that on board. Ooh, there we go. Um, I'd basically be in the TMS, I'd be looking at my traction, making sure the pan was up the right way. Um, so here, it, I'd drop it down, then put it up. Output is really high. Um, on our trains, it, it's uh, maximum, we look for basically around about 400, um, which is about right for where it's, it's sometimes just under, um, but it's never that high up. Um, I believe it's APS as well, not ABS. Um, engine status, it doesn't let me on that, or will it let me on at this time? No, it's fine. Um, we'd basically go into the engine status to make sure the apco mode and that was set up. Um, and check the temperature because we have to have the engines at a certain temperature before we can switch them over. Um, brake status is just solid. I don't think that changes, does it? No, it's just fine. But um, with the brake changes, uh, what we'd be looking for is um, we'd put the we'd basically move the controller from min to max into emergency, and we'd be basically looking for these to all change and be within a certain range. Um, however, when we're doing this, I normally start by looking at the brake gauge here um, for men I'm looking around about two-ish for max brake around about three and then emergency we're looking over four um, and then I'd come over and I'd do the same check over here just looking at the data just making sure it's right if anything wasn't it's called a Hitachi before the train even moves off uh, brake volume on and then from there I'd normally have it set at home so it goes straight at the home screen um, and of course we'd check our journey as well just to make sure that lines up with the poise sheet and uh, Taz goes over in this little gap here is where we'd have our iPads which basically gives us the additional warnings and whatnot. Um, Alright, let's pop you back to home. How often do you, you have to communicate with say the dispatcher or head office um, while you're in the train? When we're, the train's getting dispatched from a station, we'll always, you'll have the T, TM who works with the dispatcher and then basically we'll get two buzzers from the TM when the station duties are complete. That's normally as much as we do. However, if we're an empty coaching stock, so it's just us, we're taking the train to a depot or wherever, um, then we'll be the ones that communicate with the dispatchers because obviously we're the only ones on board. And then depending on where you are, depends on how you get dispatched. With some stations, um, you'll get an RA indicator, which is basically, even if we had a green, if we didn't have the RA indicator, it means that we wouldn't be able to go. Um, and then uh, other stations like Doncaster, we have to get a green hand signal, um, which you'll see dispatches where they've got the little button in the hand on the platforms. They've got like a little green light on that. And that's our kind of our, our authority to move. Um, one comment I will make um, with when the train's in neutral here, and um, the DSD won't go off. It's only if it's in forward. Um, that's when it'll start going off. So there, how it went off, that wouldn't happen in like real life. Okay. So yeah, dispatch, it just depends what type of service you're running. Um, with us obviously not being driver only orient, um, operated, um, it's minimal. If we, were, if we were DOO, we would have a lot more interaction with them. All right, let's have a look here. All right, so. I still haven't had two buzzers. Does that buzzer work or? Alright, so that normally what I buzz is buttons. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll get set up. We'll pretend we've had two buzzers, two on the buzzer back. Alright, and oop, not an emergency. Uh, I think it wants you to lock the doors. Oh, right. Just put that in the rough. There we go. There we go, right. <laughs> uh, 
There we go, all right. Now we can go. So, leaving Donny. Going to be going over the point, which are 25s. So it's not 70 just yet. The little trick with Doncaster, if there's any unmarked points, are all 25s. But yeah, it's normally up here where we'd actually be stopped, not uh, down there. And then the little trick for your acceleration point here is you're 25 all the way up to Bowlby Bridge, which is just coming up. As soon as you're under that, um, you go up to 120, and then very shortly after you go up to 125. Um, so you can just basically just fully accelerate from there. It'll be quite cool to see how we're about to go around the corner and you're going to have Donny um, IEP the depot there. The, it's one of the really, really nice um, depots that we have. Um, it's really clean, like, it's, ri it's ridiculous for a depot. You always expect them to be like really dirty and greasy and, you know, oily. It's not, um, Donny's really nice. So it'll be cool to see how it looks. So this Bobby Bridge here. Oh, next shot. Down again over that speed limit there. So there, I'm under the bridge, I can now go for me power. So yes, yeah, so that's Dunny IEP over there. Oh, there's no zoomers, very rare sight. Yeah, I remember that. That's something you have to consider. Um, it's quite often a misconception in terms of speed limits. So you <laughs> see a speed limit sign and you go past it okay. and some of our newer drivers um, will just immediately go for that speed limit whereas yeah. you've got to wait for the entire train to pass okay. into that new section yeah definitely and um, obviously the amount of time you've got to wait or the distance you've got to wait it depends on the length of the coaches um, for us if we're driving a nine car um, we normally count about five stanchions um, six if you want to be on the safe side and that's kind of like your, your safe zone um, just to go on so I know I'm coming up to the 120 board shortly there's a one two uh, that 125 board isn't there in real life um, there's normally just a 120 board just around it might be just back there um, and then obviously you just accelerate up normally got loads of freight trains over this side And when you're out here driving, um, coming around the corner, I can already see that I've got a green next, but um, you come around to some quite short signal sections, so it's, if you get any restrictives coming around here, it's there, get the brake in nice and early, as it looks like I might be getting here, so I'm just going to start and put my brakes in there. Got yellows around the corner. To loosen that up just a touch. There we go, there's my two yellows. So again, coming past here, one do maximum 90 short section, so I'm going to go a little bit heavier, but it's now gone off and I'm on all greens. Signal I must have been having a nap. I was nearly having a nap there. <laughs> okay, so that looks a little bit different how it is. We don't have those fences and that. Um, and it's definitely not as nice and green as that is. Um, but here we're coming up towards Washington level crossing. Is it quite realistic with the time you've got to answer the AWS? Or do you give fair people a bit longer? I believe it's realistic. Because right. I know for us it's uh, 2.7 seconds. So it is quite quick. That, that sounds about right. Um, yeah. We, we do have some 
train drivers in our community of, uh, of players so yeah we do tend to get that kind of feedback so the safety systems tend to be a more advanced feature for players uh-huh. so they want them to be like, kind of spot on yeah well definitely that came down really quick that oops I didn't get, don't think I got an AWS for that did I let's get the break up There's way too many boards. <laughs> Bloody hell, right? So that that's a lot of boards for a temporary speed restriction. Mm-hmm. Um, especially for the repeaters, they're normally a lot further. What is that? Is that a couch? No. All right. <laughs> oh, Jesus, right. I've ended the section. Right. Oh, God, right. That's that's me speeding. Bloody hell, right. That's, a, that's Team Biscuits chat for me there. What's this one? Right, so that's a speed board. <laughs> Right, so I don't think that was nice. Was nice work. I want more than double the running speed through it there. Jesus, right? So normally with TSR, you have basically the the warning board. You then have your service breaking distance. You then have kind of the commencement board and then a termination. So where I've just had about, I think it was about six of them there. That was way too many. Um, the only time you'd have an additional one is if it's an emergency speed restriction. That's when you'd get like the little, um, what we call it a Dalek, because that's what it reminds us of. Um, and then like those repeater boards would be more if you're coming out of a loop, if you're at the end of a platform, or if it's more than, I believe it's 300 metres in length. Um, so that was like, that was like overkill that. It was a lot. <laughs> Uh, at all, coming around to Bawtree neutral section here. There we go, there's my neutral section sign. So I've got the front panel up here, so I'm just gonna knock my power off. Now, interesting to see, does it go red? All right, so there, normally, going for the neutral section with VCD, light it come on. But that's okay. But I'll go back up to one two five. So just go full power. If I'm going towards a green aspect, I'll hear the bing, so it's a bell. If I was going towards a restrictive aspect, so it could be two yellow, single yellow, red. Um, I'd have a horn go up, and that's what I'd have the 2.7 seconds to respond to. Um, I can always also have the horn go off if I'm going towards um, a change of speed that's more than 33%. Um, we have them all over the route. There's some at York where it drops down to 60. Um, Derham on the way back, if you drop them down to 80. Um, and we've got to react to them if not, if we miss it. Um, basically, the amenity break goes on on the train. Um, and then we have to kind of report it and, you know, it's not a, it's a bit of a tail, a tail between your legs situation. But um, when we're out driving, uh, when we're going towards a signal, sometimes there can be what we call an AWS code two fault. And that's if I was going towards a signal here, and instead of getting the bell that I've just got, I'd get a horn. So I'd still have to react to it and stop it, but I'd then have to report it to the signal because it's a fault. Um, then ones we call right side failures, because it's failed safe, you know, there's no issues. But say if I'd went towards a red, and I'd got the bell, the screen keeps going all over here. Um, then that'd be a wrong side failure and it's stop the train immediately and report it. So it was Ransky, we've just gone over, heading up towards Tor Earth, and then we're, oh, train's there. That was longer than 2.7, that, surely. Um, heading up towards Redford next. So, for Redford, um, is one of our known fail-to-call stops. And the reason for that is you've got to have a specific signal sequence to stop there. Um, as we come around here towards Sutton, um, you'll see a signal in the foreground, uh, sorry, the background. Um, that signal must give you two flashing aspects to be put over. If not, you're going to drive straight past it. And again, 
got to stop the train, bring the signal, ring control. It's not a good con. It's not a good call to make. Yeah, it's just something coming up here. And it's that signal in the background there. So yeah, I've got my two yellows there. Two. So at the minute since there are two yellows, I'll be stopped outside of the station. Where's my speed out range? I'm just gonna have to pop that up a fair bit. Go it down. Close that round. Single yellow, red ahead. So if a red at those magnets, you've got to be down less than 20 miles per hour by the time you get to it. If not, you'll blow the grid out. Well, you'll blow the magnet. Again, emergency uh, brake will come on. Feels really weird driving this route with like a controller in my hand, I'm not gonna lie. It's weird. The kind of plot of this um, scenario is that you're in the middle of summer in a heat wave. Okay. Are there any particular things you need to be aware of when you do have that kind of weather, as opposed um, to like winter? Yeah, so the trains don't always like heat. Um, I know when I was driving last year, we had quite a few issues that came just from like, you know, parts of the train overheating. Um, which wasn't great. Um, there were faults that you could like kind of fix on the move, but um, still, obviously, having the train shouting at you and giving you a major fault alarm isn't the nicest thing. Um, then, obviously, the other things you need to be wary of is obviously the track can be impacted by the heat. You know, it can um, change shape and whatnot, um, which is one of the things that we really need to be looking out for. Um, and as well as that, it's just kind of keeping yourself right. You know, making sure you're hydrated enough. Um, obviously use the aircon that's in the cab to keep yourself nice and cool um, and just obviously the heat can have a significant effect on your concentration levels and whatnot so just even just keeping that in the back of your mind as well um, yeah It's the thing when you play the game, you often have uh, a lot of distractions around you compared to the real thing of being in the cab. You don't have that kind of same level of concentration. Yeah, normally we've got like a lot of noises happening in the cab. Um, and it's obviously just trying to keep an eye on what we're actually doing. I know I've had it before where I've been running like unrestricted signals and I've had the signal to call me and I'm like, kind of talk right now, you know, I'm uh, kind of dealing with these signals. Or if you've got like your train manager calling through you and you're like, you know, just give me a minute. Like, you know, just leave it there, but obviously the noise is still going off and that. So... Oh my lord, this camera's going to be making me dizzy here. Yeah. Like, what? Alright, so I've got a green there, so let's go. Is it a log stick drifting? Like drifting upwards? Yeah, it's uh, doing it by itself, yeah. Wouldn't happen on PlayStation. <laughs> Alright, so on the way in here. So the set of points is the only one at Redford, which is a 50. All the others are 40s. We've got to, we've got to be aware to be down for the platform. Coming in on a green.
So again, coming in here, I'm aiming to be at about 30, the edge of the platform. I normally do 30, but brakes are a bit temperamental on this one. And since I've came in on a green, I know I don't have to worry about being down for 20 for the magnet. Now, as a Newcastle driver, Redford's one of the stations we don't stop at very often. Um, so it's, if you're coming into one of those stations, it's um, obviously just being aware of that. Um, especially with Redford, stop boards are normally off the end of the platform. Well, they are off the end of the platform. Um, so it's just being aware of that. And this is stopping out a lot shorter than usual again. Um, for a nine car, we're right at the end. Um, however, since this will give me the point, I will stop here. But where that white gate is ahead, that's where we'd normally be stopping. So yeah, so the stop positions are quite far off where we'd be. Um, mm -hmm. We're literally like, basically there's the stop board, I believe it's just on the other side of the fence. Um, and that's where we'd be stopping normally, um, especially in a nine car. Um, but to be fair, actually, all of our trains stop in the same place, so it would be regardless if we were a 9, a 5 or a 10. Um, it would always be at the end of the platform. I know with some um, talks, they do have, like, kind of, I know I normally see a TPE one that looks like ours, but has, like, a 5 or 6 car uh, stop board to it. Um, but we'd always be up, basically right up the back there, because I don't even know if we'd be fully platformed here. I'll go and have a little look. Oh, wait there. I'll, uh... Oh, I need every chair. Plum and break on here, right. Down a new roll. DRS it. Right, let's go and have a little wonder. Right, that should not be going off that train's in your roll. Right, I'm just gonna. If we go outside, we won't hear it. Oh, Jesus, that gets louder. How does that work? Right, let's just go and have a look. Soon find out if they will put the emergency brakes on because with the DSD we have seven seconds. Um and then if we don't react after that, the emergency brake goes on. And then I think it's after about sixty seconds it ends up contact the train itself will contact the um signal app to let them on. Yeah, so can you see that I'm not fully platformed? So yeah. if I'd if in in like real life, if I'd stopped there and I'd released my doors, I would not be driving that train any further, I'd be getting relieved and I'd be having a meeting with my manager asking me why. Because if I release the doors there, what would happen is you'd have these doors down here would open as well. Yeah. Um, so you'd have literally like passengers opening the doors and they'd be on the track. So it wouldn't, wouldn't particularly be a good day at the office for me. No, um, no. That's why we have to make sure we go all the way at the end. It, it might have been misleading. Um, that, that particular instruction, we have what are called go via instructions. Yeah. So you might see a marker but okay. it's not necessarily somewhere you need to stop at you're just right, passing okay. through right yeah it's a nice day in it <laughs> would you ever have any stations which do have like um selective door control um yes there is some and it's sometimes we need to use it if we've got um disruption or if we've got um, kind of any, if we need to have something isolated where we then need the full control. We've had it, um, I've had colleagues before who have had to use it as well. Um, if we've had to have like BTP come on board or anything like that, obviously just to keep everyone on um, until everything's been dealt with. I like how it stops when I sit in the seat. <laughs> right, um, but yeah, it's more um, kind of locations uh, north of the route where they have to use the SDO. Um, for me personally, going up to London, um, at the moment there's nowhere where I have to use it. Because um, it's uh, basically it's programmed into the TMS where it's uh, like, you know, um, these doors um, are open, these ones are closed. Um, we can also get, so you can see blue there, we can all, that means all the doors are closed. If it was red, that means that one of the doors is open. We can also get black, which means they're all locked out. Um, Again, can you use the SDO function on this? Uh, 
Never mind. All right. So, there you are. Right, so, stop at Newick. Right, so, are the doors closed? Right, it's so, head not. Right. That shouldn't have happened. AWS and AWS That's as if, like, the train's been turned off that. Right, and then the only other thing is that obviously the next location sent stop at near at Northgate has that been added on because of the disruption? Because team at St Peterborough. Uh, yeah, I believe so. That's right. where your destination is at the moment. Yeah, so you've got a stop at Newark, and okay. then your next stop and final stop is at Peterborough. As I'm coming out here, I know main line speeds are 120, but around the corner it's dropping at 115. So if you're ever coming out of here, just just go to 115. Obviously, make sure you're past the points, but then you can accelerate from there. And the clear that. Drop them up. Got a whistleboard coming up shortly. Actually, got two coming up. Got one for Eaton Lane, then you got one for Gamston Road. So it'll be quite cool to see what they look like in this. There it is. Oh, two seconds on that. Do a high tone as well. So it just does low tone, yeah? Rather than low high. Uh, you can do both. Um... Oh, right, there we go, right. Uh, if you hold X and press the analog stick, um, that does your high tone. Ah, uh, right, okay, right, got it. Got Ascombe Bridge here, coming up towards Markham Summit. Um, if you ever actually out drive, like on this route, um, when you come up towards the basically the right hand side curve, if you look on the left side, the guy who's got a spaceship in his back garden, and it looks really cool. Is that the strangest thing you've seen along the road? Oh no, there's pink elephants, uh, bears, there's all sorts on the route. And you just, you see it one day, it's basically if you're coming along Markham, it's just down there, it's in that garden, but he's got a spaceship. Um, but there's a lot of like kind of quite quirky things out on the route. Um, it's like I know, it didn't happen this Christmas, but I've been told over Christmases, um, there's kind of like two, um, they're like farms right next to each other. And they normally have a load of Christmas decorations up and they kind of try to outdo each other. Um, so it's even like little points like that are quite quirky as well. Oh, 40 pictures. Nice. And back to 125. Yeah, it's like for me, for some areas, um, I look at the the pylons. So it's like we're coming around towards Tuxford here. And the way when I was learning that I used to remember them is the um, little 
uh, pylons that you see to the side look at, like a little space invader. Um, trying to put a tuxedo on, so tuxedo Tuxford. Um, so it's even just like little points like that are quite uh, quite cool to see. Yeah, so with our signaling, um, we're on four aspect, which is on the, all the fast lines up to London. Um, we've got two yellows, which is our preliminary caution. We've got a single yellow. I'm good time to talk about it, really. I'm, I'm speeding massively, and I'm going off to two yellows there. Um, so two yellows, uh, then goes single yellow, then it goes to red. Um, we can get flashing aspects, which tells us we're coming off at a diverging junction. So basically we're coming off onto the slow lines. That's when we then drop down to three aspects signaling. Three aspects signaling, we've got red, yeah, single yellow and green. Um, signal sections tend to be shorter, um, depending on where you're at. Um, but you've then still got to have your same principles where with your four aspects signaling, you'd have to be down to 60 for single yellow. It'd be the same. Here, even though you might be doing 125, you've still got to get down to 60. And then obviously red, don't go past it, otherwise you'll uh, have a spad, which isn't yes. exactly what we want. No, we don't like spads. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, the, the way we represent a spad in the game is more or less a, a game over scenario. Okay. Yeah, that'd definitely be the case. Uh, right, two yellows ahead. Or I get that lobbed right on. And straight to a green, honestly. Hey, right, let's just course round. It's quite interesting with the signal when you head up towards. Um, just do that. With the horn, there we go. Head up towards uh, Scotland, Edinburgh way. Um, that's when it goes from a mixture of four aspect to three aspect, and then it goes from three aspect back up to four aspect. Um, so the drives up there have the additional challenge of actually knowing where the sections are, uh, what aspects they're kind of working on, and whatnot. Put the brake back on there. Right, now we're heading in towards Newark. So for Newark, if I was going full speed here, um, I've got North Muscle Newark section coming up, um, which is after we've got Cromwell level crossing here. Um, and then it's at the Newark section you just put in a course and it should run down perfectly um, towards Church Lane, put up in a minimum 30% then and you'll be down ready for the station stop. Yeah, the name of this next cut level crossing's gone away yet, and I cannot remember what it is now. <laughs> uh, that whistle board's now being taken out. Put that in a course there. So you've got Baffley Lane here, then you've got Church Lane. It's Church Lane where you want to put the brake up to 30%. Then it'll get you down for the 100 at the flat crossing, and it'll help you get down for your speeds going for the stop at Newark. If you're not stopping at Newark and you're flying through, as soon as you get a Church Lane, you just put in a min brake, and that'll run you down for the 100. Church Lane does have a church to the side of it. Um, that's the only thing you can't really see here. Um, and to my left, it'd be a load of fishing lakes where you normally see loads of fishermen out having the time of their lives.
The tubular bridge looks fairly realistic here as well. It's quite nice that. There's two yellows. Yeah, for, for major landmarks, we do try to model them as realistically as we can. As we can. Uh, but it's interesting knowing how the, there's all these other little points of reference along the line that yeah. are really important to how you navigate. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if we could get that kind of driver perspective to get these get these points into the game. Uh -huh. Yeah. There's um, where that whistleboard just was as well. There's no whistleboard there on the actual track. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think definitely being able to get like kind of like an additional insight in, in uh, like just the actual drive itself and the points, the landmarks, everything you can see. Um, it just gives it a whole new element. Right. All right, I'll see if I can stop where I normally stop here. Coming a bit slower here, but it's a hurried. Oh, get over the line. Thank you. Yeah, so see that all board on the left? We basically get trained to um, stop as if it's like a tax desk for those of us that are still old enough to remember what they are for a car. But normally, card have a boat there. And that'd be about right. that obviously the TMS would change into Newark and it put uh, the platform that we're on as well so if you were platform two the doors are on the left then we'd release off there and just keep all, all of them for about three four seconds just to make sure it opens properly go and have a look around Newark Uh, to be fair, I think I've gone out without putting it in a neutral and that there anyway, so yeah, I thought I had done. It's a lot harder to remember to do it when you're on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> be quite cool if it was like a proper, do you know, you can get like the simulators for like the um, aircrafts and like car games. It'd be cool if you could actually get like a similar simulator for this. Is, is there anything like that into like driver training? Yes, we have actual simulators where it's basically... Um, mm. Can I zoom out anymore? We basically have a cab that's like this. Yeah. Um, obviously, we don't have the second man seat there, but we have both the, it's literally the exact same as this. Um, and then we just have the big screen in front of us. And then we get loads of different types of scenarios and whatnot um, put to us. Um, and it's basically, we can use them to test our rules knowledge. But as well as that, um, how we've got the back panel there. Two minutes just. Just turn it off. Right. I don't want it to proceed. Right, turn. I'm just going to turn that off. Right, so how in the game you've got your back panel here. Yeah. Um, we also have a similar sit um, setup with the simulator that we have where we'd have to get out of our chair and go to the back. Um, and on it, we can kind of then have a screen where we can actually look around the outside of the train so we'd know where we have to go isolate um certain like cocks and whatnot depending on what the issue is um as well as them being able to go through like the main of the train to get to the different circuit breaker boards and whatnot as well um so it is really good because it really does give you a feel for the train obviously before you're even out driving it because we have to go through like 16 weeks of classroom based training before they let us anywhere near one of these um just to make sure we're like we've got that knowledge there so you know we don't break it or obviously cause any issues crashes you know 
spilt cups of tea in the background and whatnot. So it's um, it is a good experience, and it does help with learning quite a lot. Are there any external checks you need to do as a driver? Um, as in outside of the train? Yeah. Um, so if we are basically taking a set off a depot or we're mobilising it, we'll be doing all visual checks outside. So we'll be doing um, checks on the pan when that's raised to make sure there's no damage to it. You know, um, there's no like kind of erosion, which could then affect the performance. We're checking that all the cables on the train are as they should be. We're checking the uh, secondary suspension, which basically looks like a tyre uh, under the carriage, um, making sure they're properly inflated. And as well as that, it's obviously going through the TMS, making sure that oh, there's no major minor faults on there that we need to be aware of. Um, on our little clipboard in front, we'd normally have a fitness to run, um, which basically outlines um, from the depot um, if there's been any issues, any restrictions that are then applied to the train. We can also get form A's given to us as well, which would kind of say, like, you know, um, ones I've had recently are isolated traction converters um, and it basically says you can proceed um, if, it, if it's already in service um, so I normally get them if I'm then mobilising a set from King's Cross but that train's already came in so because it's already in a service it's okay to proceed um, and it's safe to do so there's no issues um, and obviously just then um, being aware of that because we'd have the little major fault that comes up just above wherever the carriage is, where it's been isolated on there. But um, yeah, and obviously it's just checking the lights are on. Um, we do have the little kind of diagram over here. So how I've got the dim lights on now, if I'd imagine if that's still turned on there, let me just turn that back on. So normally um, um, we'd have TPWS the remote taillights said being red and the other being white and it's just to mirror what it looks like outside so we know if there's any issues with any of them um, but yeah other than that that's pretty much it for the kind of external checks it's basically just making sure everything looks as it should there's no obvious damage um, and that's fit for the service really yeah that's really cool um I know it's something from our like more advanced players that they do want to see things like uh, random faults in the game, uh, which would be something really interesting to explore. It's uh -huh. something difficult to communicate in terms of a game because your average player might not know what the difference between a fault is and they might, be, might perceive it as the game not working as it should. Uh -huh. It's like an intentional fault. <laughs> It'd be an interesting one to explore. Yeah, definitely. Because there is a lot that can go wrong with these trains, and sometimes it's kind of the knowledge of the driver, understanding what needs to be done and when, and obviously knowing who to contact just to get obviously authority to do that. Um, that can be kind of like a real game changer, really. Um, speaking of external checks as well, the other checks we'd do is if we've hit anything. Um, we'd get permission to go down, get the line blocks in, we'd go do the external check then to see if there's been any damage as well. If you like this video, drop us a like, leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel. Yeah.